Whether it's a product for home or business, farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Tonight, Westinghouse Studio One presents The Willow Cabin. Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. <laughs> Oh, Jay, pour yourself a drink and make me one, two, four, the rabble gets I want to kiss you. Why? Because you were good, my puppet. And we have a hit on our hands. Oh, stinking drains. What did you say? I made poor Ronald break up in his last speech. I'm sorry, darling. Why do I do those things? Well, since my ears are still ringing with the cries of Arthur, I'll forgive you. Here's to a new leading lady for the English stage, Carolyn Seward. You're biased. Certainly. Oh, but I didn't fix a clack to win you. I, I still have a little pride left. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Jay, I'm terribly proud. They adore me. Thanks, Kate. Carol, you met my sister Kate, haven't you? Of course. Oh, this is my husband. Hello, Jay. Hello, Mickey. Congratulations, Miss Seward. You were awfully good, I thought. Ugh, I was bloody awful. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Don't let Carolyn frighten you, Mickey. Her heart's in the right place. But, but... her manners and language are abominable. Carolyn, <laughs> darling, you were quite brilliant in it. You were Carol. You were Carol. Hello, Jay. Hello, Joan. Joan, you know Jay's sister, Kate Forrest? How do you do? And this is my husband. How do you do? Joan Bridges, everybody. We were at dramatic school together. Only I retired to the publishing business because Carol got all the breaks for both of us. Oh, excuse me, this is Michael No, Caro. He pestered the life out of me to meet you. The famous surgeon. Harley Street boy wonder. Absolutely. How do you do? How do you do? You gave a very fine performance tonight. Joe, darling. I suppose you know that without my telling. I know nothing of the sort. I'm far too vulgar and hoidenish to play a cloistered maiden. I'm just crude, that's all. Well, that's too bad. I kept thinking what a lovely viola you'd make. Now I'm not sure. What made you say that? Viola is the one thing I've always wanted to do. Could do if you'd try growing up a bit. <laughs> You're not much fun, are you? Oh, do have a drink, everybody. My intention is to get very tight tonight and insult all my bloody friends. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to reform me, would you? No, it would never occur to me that I could. Just that when I see anyone who has a great deal to offer, as you have, it's rather a pity you don't realize it. You do hit below the belt, don't you? When necessary. No, no, thank you. We must let you get dressed, Carol, darling. Now you're all coming on to my party at the door, sister. I do hope you can come too, Mr. Noel. Thank you. I'd like it very much. May I drive you around? Oh, well, Jay... Uh, well, yes, thank you. I'd love you to. Then perhaps we should all go on ahead? Oh, yes, dear. Come with us. Excuse me, we go to the Well, Kara seems to have struck down the famous surgeon. Possibly. Oh, poor old Jen. Kara always seems to get there first, doesn't she? This is one time I don't mind. As a matter of fact, I planned it that way. What? Michael Knoll is every girl's favorite man but mine. I thought it might distract Caro for an evening. Sinister, of me, isn't it? The lengths I go to to get your attention, Mr. Brookfield. Shall we go? 
It's after four. You must be exhausted. You said I might come in for a nightcap. I need one, too. Even after the Dorchester? Awful, though, wasn't it? Cigarette? Oh, yes, please. As you see, I have all the appetite. Was that another attempt to shock me? No. Just more honest than I meant it to be. I'm greedy about living. That's strange. Well, I suppose you are. Nothing in your face gives witness to that avid hunger. You appear as ethereal as a fountain. You do have a nice way with words, Mr. No. What shall we drink to? Us. Us? Oh, very well. To us. I only wish I knew a little more about what you're thinking. And there's nothing very mysterious about me. Oh, that's where you're wrong. Tonight in my dressing room, you made me feel like a schoolgirl. I could gladly have slapped your face. <laughs> and then, immediately afterward, you made up for it all by making me feel important. Well, that's possibly because I think you are. Oh. I still get the impression you don't approve of me. Why? Well, I keep wondering why you think it necessary to use ugly words in public. Do you enjoy shocking people? <laughs> I don't know. I used to. <laughs> You're too intelligent to go on acting like an adolescent forever, you know. Perhaps it's because I always seem to be fighting something or somebody. Your family? Well, my mother and I never got along. She and my stepfather look on me with long, suffering disdain. She's one of the original spoilers of the fun. You're running away from them, aren't you? Always, in a sense. What should I do? Get married? No. Marriage at the beginning of a career can be the most fatal mistake. I made it, I know. Are you still married? Unfortunately, yes. Can't you get a divorce? Why, Michael? I can't imagine you being intimidated. Intimidated? Well, if you want a divorce and your wife won't give you one, you must be. Is she here in England? No, she spends most of her time in France. She's an artist. Oh, what's her name? Mercedes. Next question. I didn't mean to dig too deep. It's very late. Do you have to operate on someone distinguished at seven in the morning? <laughs> no, I shouldn't be here if I did. Do you ever get the jitters like me? Want to stay up all night and talk? to keep from being alone? Often. I don't sleep well at the best of times. I have nightmares. We're both a little confused. I expect we have that at least in common. Good night. Shall I see you again? If you like. A decision like this I make quickly. Odd, isn't it, that I can't tidy up my life in the same way? But Michael, it has to be said. I think I'm going to fall in love with you. I wish now I'd left sooner and hadn't kissed you. Why? Because I can give you nothing. I don't ask for anything. I have no right in the world to you. I'm hopelessly involved. I can never be free and I'm nearly 40. You're... 22 and on the verge of a brilliant career. I was sure hours and hours ago, weren't you? Yes. Then why should we be afraid? Because... I can't love you in your way. Do you think you can ever be content with mine? Now and forever. Now come in, Leopold. You know my secretary, Miss Hayden? Good afternoon, Mr. Brokaw. How do you do? It's good to have you back in London. Oh, better. Uh, I'm expecting Miss Seward at any moment. To show her in right away, will you? Mr. Brokaw hasn't much time. Yes, Mr. Brokaw. Well? What do you think? She's good. 
In fact, I think my search has ended, thanks to you. Well, do you think that Carolyn can handle it? With direction, I'm certain she can. And I would like her to read for me tomorrow. Oh, fine. That'll give her tonight to look over the script. I feel that she has everything for it. There is only one thing. I've heard that she is erratic, unreliable. Well, I don't know... And I know do not it. like temperament. It is a form of mental laziness. I think I can promise you that Carolyn will be more than cooperative. Miss Stewart, Mr. Brookfield. Oh, come in, Carol. Sorry, I'm late. Some dreary people came round after the matinee. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Carolyn, uh, Mr. Rokoff saw the matinee this afternoon. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I thought we were bloody awful. I'm thinking of you for a new play, Miss Stewart. Was that the one you're bringing over from America? I hear it's terrific. No, it's merely a good play. And I would like you to read a part to me tomorrow. It is Lee. Well, I'm wildly flattered. Only I don't know. Oh, Carolyn, Mr. Rokoff has turned down practically every big star in London. I understand perfectly. Read it. And if you like it, come to my office tomorrow at, uh, let's say, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 4 tomorrow? Well, I think I can manage that. I shall expect you at 4. When would you be uh, starting rehearsals? In about two weeks. That's soon. Well, thank you very much for considering me. At four tomorrow, then. Good afternoon, monsieur. Good afternoon, Jay. Oh, bye-bye, Leopold. Um, I'll call you tonight about six o'clock, all right? By all means, call me up. All right, bye-bye. You little fool! I could strangle you. Why? What on earth's the matter with you? Don't you realize what this can mean to your career? I know very well. What I don't know is whether I want a career at all. <coughs> what? I don't know if I want to act any more in any play. This isn't any play. Here, look at these New York reviews. They say a lot more than I can. You don't have to make infantile excuses to me. The reason is Michael No. My private life is none of your business. This is my business. And you're not going to chuck away a chance like this for anyone. Not while I... Well, not while there are still people who love you enough to stop you. These are good, aren't they? Settings by Mercedes No. Yes, well, certainly she. She does all Rokoff's designing in New York. I never knew that. Well, that can't make any trouble for you. She won't be coming here. I've checked that already. Well, you aren't going to let that make any difference, I are you? I don't know. Now, listen, Kara. Now, look, you, you'd only be hurting yourself. And you've been hurt enough by gossip. You'll never. As if I cared. Stinking drains, all right. I'll read the bloody thing. Oh, that's better. And you'll be at Rokoff's office at four tomorrow. Understand? I love you when you're angry. Answer me. Yes, I'll be there. Promise? Promise. These are waiting for signature, Mr. Brookfield. Yeah. Well, that girl. Can you imagine anyone else in the world except Carolyn Seward hesitating over a chance like this? She wouldn't hesitate if she knew Mr. Noel a little better. What was that? I know him rather well. I was his wife's secretary for several years before I came to work here. Where are you there? Tell me, is she as impossible as everybody says? I admired Mrs. Noel very much. Oh, so that's why you never liked Kara. Here are the matinee returns, Mr. Brookfield. <laughs> Yes, I know. Do you think I could do it? Of course you could. Oh, blast. I wish I knew what to do. I don't want to get tied up just now. All oh, right, but at this point in your career... And blast my career, too. I'd never regret anything I gave up for Michael. Well, I'm only thinking that you and he... Things like this can't go on forever, Carol. Oh, you're late. In an urgent case at the last... Hello, John. Hello, Michael. Well, uh, I'm a stash. Oh. Do you have to go? I've got a date. But you needn't look so relieved. <laughs> Bless you both. Let's have lunch next week. All right, I'll ring you. Do that. Bye. Goodbye, Joe. You said on the phone that you had some news. Yes. What? <laughs> no one in the world can turn as pale as you. I've had to accept the American offer. When? Tuesday week. To give those dreary lectures at the Mayo Clinic. Very important, darling. Oh, I know. But two months. Or three. Sentence of death. I can't turn it down. Three months is too long. A day would be too long. My dear. Look, I'm driving down to Cold Ash tomorrow. You, you want to come? That was Mercedes' place, wasn't it? Yes. Totally. Beautiful and 
cold as a sliver of ice. But there are a couple of things of mine that I want to pick up. My sister Dorothy lives only a mile or so away. I'd like you to meet her. Does she approve of me? She will. I'd like that. Oh, blast, I forgot. What? I have to read for a part at four. I wouldn't let you miss that. We'll be back by four oh, then. Oh, Michael. What is it? Oh, nothing. Just that we always have so little time. I never liked it, although I suppose it is a good painting. But I'm biased. I never liked Mercedes' work, any of it. It looks, somehow, unfinished. Well, it never was finished. And she... Mercedes thought it was clever to leave things in that state. I see. And now I'm going to get you some tea, if I can get the stove going. The house has been shut up for so long. <laughs> it's rather nice to see someone like you here. It's taken off the chill. She approves. I'm glad. I like her. Michael, you know, this is really a very beautiful place. Oh, yes, I suppose it is. It's too full of Mercedes, though. Darling. Headache? No, I didn't sleep last night. Again? Why does it go on happening? I don't know. No reason. Don't bother me, Cato. My dear. My dear. Michael. Wait. Cut those initials on the pen with a diamond. It was the day we were married. It's fatal. Writing on glass. Can't be sponged off. Is that three o'clock? We'd best be starting back. Why? No, reading for a part at four, remember? Oh. I had forgotten. Shall we quite forget? Certainly not. I'll tell Dorothy to skip the tea. Oh, hello. Here's one of the few things I want to take with me. What is it? Oh, it's beautiful. Yes, I've always loved it. <laughs> well, I won't be a moment. Lucky, aren't you? You belong to him. You could slip into his pocket and be taken to America. While I stay here. Or do I? Are you angry, darling? Oh, yes, you are. But I had to be with you, Michael. You threw over your chance with Rokoff. Did it mean so much to you? It meant so little to me. How can I answer that? Michael, say what you have to say. I should be terribly angry with you. Throwing away everything for me. I, I told you once I could give you nothing. I'll go on with that if you'll let me. I'll take second best anything. I love you so much. I love you, too. That's all right, then. No, it isn't. You shan't go on having second best. Mercedes is in New York. I'll see her. And if my divorce ever happens, we'll be married. No, let me say something first. I want you to know that I love you. I want you to be very sure of that. Is it possible? I want to be at peace with you. I want us to be married. I, I love you. That's all. Oh, Michael.
interrupt this program to bring you a special announcement. German planes today bombed Warsaw. An official communique says that German panzer divisions are sweeping across the border into Poland. The Prime Minister of Great Britain, Mr. Chamberlain, has issued a statement to the effect that a note will be sent immediately to the German ambassador. seen part one of the Willow Cabin, let's turn to our Westinghouse program. This calls for a close-up. <laughs> I'll say it does. It's right out of the old family album. But how can we get a close-up? Well, if you have a Westinghouse television set, it's very simple. Whenever you get a picture that calls for a close-up, just turn the knob of that amazing new invention, the Westinghouse electronic magnifier. And there. You're so close, you feel that you could almost reach out and remove this false mustache. <laughs> Only a Westinghouse set has this wonderful new electronic magnifier. And here's the knob that controls it. Now, let's see exactly what happens when you're watching a television screen and you turn on the electronic magnifier. Let's suppose that you're watching a couple of wrestlers and you'd like to see them closer. Just turn the electronic magnifier knob and presto, you've got a ringside seat at the match. A wonderful advantage, isn't it? Yes. And only a Westinghouse set has this amazing electronic magnifier. And this set also has a built-in antenna. That means in many localities, there are no installation costs. And this set also has Westinghouse synchro tuning. Now that means that when you tune in for the best sound, you don't get a so-called picture like this. And when you tune in for the best picture, you don't get sound like this. Because Westinghouse Synchro Tuning tunes in the best sound and the best picture together automatically. Yes, you'll find this Westinghouse set so easy to enjoy. The smoothest operating television you can get today. And remember, with electronic magnifier, this Westinghouse 12 and a half inch set gives you big picture television at small picture price. It costs only $259.95, and you can buy it on a small down payment plan. See it at your Westinghouse dealers tomorrow. And now let's return to Westinghouse Studio One and the Willow Cabin. Oh, hello, Dorothy. Yes, I tried to get through to you earlier. I wanted to tell you our unit's being moved out of London next week. Guess where? No, dear, far more ironic than that. Cold ash, it's true. I'll have the specter of Mercedes hovering around me like a butterfly. Michael? No, I'm waiting for him now. He was due an hour ago. No, dear, worse. Oh, I don't want him to know how worried I am, but... Oh, there he is now, I think. I'll see you next week. Bye. Hello, Carol. Oh. It's you. I thought it would be Michael. I brought Dr. Lloyd for you. How do you do? Thank you for coming. Michael was one of my best interns at Guy's. I was very fond of him. I was glad to come. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Isn't Michael in yet? No, oh, I can't understand it. He was due at six. Don't worry, darling. He'll turn up. Oh, I suppose so. But why isn't he phoned? He knew I'd be waiting. Have you tried to reach him anywhere? Every place I know. He left the hospital at four. Wherever he's been, it's not one of our regular haunts. I've tried them all. You're seriously worried about him, aren't you? Yes. I'm afraid he's heading for a complete breakdown. Or worse. Well, it's a tough job in army hospitals these days. Oh, it isn't that. Michael eats work. Well, there's a limit to the body's resources, just the same, you know. It's his mind that worries me. Well, what do you think is the trouble? Insomnia, to begin <laughs> with. That's only a symptom, you know. Yes, I know. And I know the cause. He's fighting all the time, inside. Michael has two wars, and one's enough for anybody. Well, what's his private war? His wife. 
I thought they were separated. They are. There was to have been a divorce. Now all that's put aside. She's somewhere in Europe and no one seems to know where. And is this what's preying on his mind? She's been preying on him in one way or another for years. And he won't talk of any of it. Hmm. Do you think he'd talk to me? Don't know. I just know that I... Well, there he is now. You're the only magnificent girl that I adore. When the moon shines. Oh, no. Sean. Billy. What a pleasant surprise. Darling. Are you all right? Certainly I'm all right. I'm terribly sorry. That's all right, monsieur. How are you feeling, Michael? Fine, thank you, Billy. Nice of you to inquire. Joan, I, I think you'd better just... We'll push off. Sorry, Tom. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Lloyd. You do understand. Poor Carol. Poor old Carol. She deserved better. Michael, dear, I don't want to pry, but where have you been? Quiet, secluded little place in Soho, the French Horn. You were to be here at six. Did you forget? I don't honestly know how to tell you. I found myself in a taxi. I had a few whiskeys at the mess. I don't know how I got there, but lampshades and the tables, just the same as they'd been years ago. Yellow lampshades. Circular patterns in black. Were you meeting someone there, Michael? I was hunting for a stone cat. Smooth and graceful. Full of mystery. Couldn't find it. But darling, you lost that cat in America in 39, don't you remember? Did I? I thought I saw it grinning at me tonight. It's only an old hag at the next table. Michael, what is it? Tell me, please. You're frightening me. I don't know why you always want to know every ugly little truth. Lies are prettier. They soothe you to sleep like a lullaby. Can't you leave a man alone? No, I can't and I won't. I loved you and I've never seen you like this before. Oh, Carol. I don't know what's the matter. I got some bad news today. Mercedes. She's been picked up by the Germans. They know now. Her name was on one of the Red Cross lists. Oh? Not very good news, is it? Bad luck for everybody, for her, for you. Yes. If I could only sleep just a few hours. I can't go on, Carol. Don't worry, Michael. I'll get you something. I can't go on. I can't go on. Warren Simmons. Give this to Warren with my love and ask her why the bloody NCO school didn't teach her how to make out a claim. Yes, ma'am. Pay sheets for tomorrow, too. Oh, my least favorite thing. All right, Simmons. Hello. Hello. Carol here? No, she's over district. Why? Oh, there's some bloke here to see her. I said I'd try to find her. Michael! How on earth did you get here? Why didn't you let us know? I didn't have time. I'm going overseas tomorrow. I have to be back in London in two hours. Where's Carol? In Gilbert District. Call them for me, will you, and see if Carol's left? I um, don't mean to be personal, but did you wangle this posting panel now? Yes. Billy Lloyd was head of my board. He slipped me through. Does Carol know? No, I didn't want to tell her. She might try to have Ten it. minutes? Thanks, Tom. Bye. She ought to be here now. They said she left ten minutes ago. See if you can catch her at the gate, will you? Well... War is a bloody awful business, I must say. Let's have a drink. I've got half a bottle of whiskey left hidden from the well-known thirst of our chief commander. Still a resourceful type, am I Thanks, Joan, but I don't think I'd better. I've only got a few moments. I don't want to see Kero here. Do you want to step out in the garden? Yes. Would you tell her what I am? Yes, I'll tell her.
How long have we got? Only a few moments. This is staff car picking me up to take me back to London. You look tired. I am. I've been tired ever since I got here. You're tired, too. I'll get a good rest on convoy. I hate the bloody medical board. At least it proved I'm fit enough. But you're not. You're not sleeping any better, and you still have those nightmares. They don't matter. Yes, they do. Does Mercedes still come into those dreams? How did you know I dreamed about her? Well, that night, after you got back from the French home, you spoke her name over and over. Why haven't you told me this before? Oh, I couldn't. It doesn't hurt me. I only worried for you. Bless you. I'm sorry, Carol. She was on your mind then, wasn't she? Wasn't she? You were on my mind. Mercedes, too, though. And I suppose, in a way, she always has been. Now... Do you think she's dead? She's not dead. How do you know? I'd know if she were dead. Michael, let me come up to London with you. Oh, I God. can wangle a few days' leave. No, it's better this But way. you might be there two days. Might be a week before Carol, embarkation. Please, let me promised. come. All right. I'm sorry, Michael, for the pause here. Thank you, John. I'll have to go. I know. Remember, Caro, if either of us were killed... Oh, uh, Michael. I haven't the slightest doubt that we'll go on together as one. We've shared so much. I'll remember. Oh, my dear. My dear. I've got to let you go now, I suppose. Yes. Keep an eye on her for me, John. I'm counting on you. I'll do my best. Good luck, Mike. Look, I uh, got this out earlier. Here. You better have something. Mm. Thanks. I need it. Look, there she is. Who? Mercedes. There on the window pane. Well, his luck to Michael and Carolyn, who never really had any luck. papers on my desk to the orderly room, will you? Yes, ma'am. Oh, no. Hello. This is to inform you that Chief Commander Lillian Hibbert has now elected Queen Spoiler of the Fund. I've been made officer in charge of recreational activity for the next month. <laughs> well, what's the matter, Joe? What's wrong? Uh, it's going to be tough, Carol. Well, go on. Tell me, bad news should never be broken gently. It's Michael. Yes? He's dead. Who told you? It's in the evening paper. Read it to me. Colonel Michael Noel, DSO, RAMC, was found dead early this morning in his bedroom at the French Horn Hotel. A bottle of sleeping tablets was by his side. An inquest has been ordered by the coroner. May I read it?
Carol. Stay here. I'll get you a drink and keep everyone out of the room. Perfectly all right. I'm not going to faint or anything. Carol, darling. No, please, just leave me alone. <laughs> Carol, did you hear what happened to Mona? The poor darling forgot to sign a requisition for the chief commander's car and the old girl. I say, is there anything wrong? No, nothing. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. It's after six. Surely the inquest must be over by now. How long have you got, Joe? Till nine. Is Michael's sister with Karen? Dorothy? Yes. Oh, what a nightmare for them both. Mm, yeah. Oh, here they are. It's over? Yes. Verdict, death by misadventure. Oh, I know them. Every one of them. Oh, Carolyn, dear, please don't. Didn't you notice how disappointed that dreary little foreman of the jury sounded when they filed in with a verdict? He couldn't even make suicide stick. Ah, I feel ill. I want a drink. All right. I'm not going to be tiresome. It's all over now. Over. Finished. What was all that talk about a letter? Did anyone get any word from him? No, no one. But the waiter said he thought Michael was writing a letter at the table. He was dining alone. He was obviously overtired then. And on top of that, he got a sudden call. Home of our casualty. All serious cases. His assistant testified that he'd been in the operating room for ten hours. It was an accident, wasn't it, Carolyn? He took an overdose in the night. John, dear, could you take me back now? Our train is due. Good night, darling. Write to me. Come and see me when you can. Will you be all right? Yes. I'll be here. dead and somehow you must face it. Yes, I know. Michael's dead. But I must find out why. Why? You heard why. It was an accident. Was it? Shall I tell you why I was so angry with them in court today, trying to rake up a shilling's worth of cheap sensation? It was because they were right. Carolyn. Oh, I know it all now. Michael, a doctor, take an overdose of sleeping pills? Michael committed suicide. No, but look, I... Otherwise, why didn't he let me come up to London with him? Because he knew that he was going to do it. He knew that night he was drunk. He was haunted, always. And I've got to find out why. It wasn't the war. It wasn't exhaustion. It was Mercedes. She destroyed him. It took her years to do it, but she destroyed him. How to be sure? I can't, not yet. But someday, when all this is over, I'll find Mercedes, and somehow, some way, I'll get the truth out of her. The truth. <laughs> Look at our Westinghouse program again. Let's get a better fit. <laughs> it seems to me that coat wasn't made for Betty Furness. It certainly wasn't. And there are lots of things that weren't made to fit the way people try to use them. Take this horizontal home freezer, for instance. Now, how are you going to fit it into a crowded kitchen so that you won't have to go down in the cellar or out to the garage for your frozen foods? Well, here's the right solution to that problem. 
This Westinghouse home freezer and Westinghouse refrigerator, both of them, fit into exactly the same space as that horizontal freezer. And they give you more than twice as much storage space right in your kitchen. Now, here's another reason that you're going to be glad that you chose the Westinghouse upright freezer. You'll never be bending down and digging around for foods as you'd have to with the horizontal freezer. You stand up straight when you take foods out of the Westinghouse upright freezer with its reach-in convenience. Now, you just open this door, and here, you fast freeze and store your foods in any of these compartments. Imagine, it's cold enough to fast freeze foods in any of these three compartments. Now, you can fill your Westinghouse freezer with 210 pounds of frozen foods. It's so convenient. No wonder the Westinghouse upright freezer is such a favorite with women. It saves so much in food costs. And men like it too, because it costs only $239.95 to own this wonderful home freezer. And now let's have a look at the Westinghouse refrigerator, the twin of the freezer. Now it costs only $234.95 for seven cubic feet of storage space and real Westinghouse quality. See this handsome refrigerator and upright freezer at your Westinghouse dealer store. And remember, you can buy either one or both on his convenient payment plan. Why not stop in tomorrow? We return now to the Willow Cabin. Hello, Jay. Hi there, darling. You were a sweet thing to come. I know it's a chore. Oh, a terrible chore. Uh, can I out? She shouldn't be, but she is. She promised to be back by six. <laughs> She'll never lose her bad habits. Among them, a proclivity for changing her mind. Oh, Jay, she's got to. The war's been over nearly a year now, and she won't get a move on. All this week, she's been bottled up in one of those black moods of hers. She's even getting ready to throw up this pot. I know the signs. Oh, she's crazy. I know a dozen young women who'd give their, well, their back teeth to play Viola in Mr. J. Brookfield's all-star production of Twelfth Night. Remember Michael saying he'd like to see her as Viola? Mm -hmm. That's what's done it. Doesn't want to play Viola for anyone else. Talks about performing for a ghost. Cockeyed, isn't it? I can only offer her the one thing she doesn't want. Here she is. Hello. Well, Jay, is a plot? Or did you just drop in? No, it's a plot. Joan's tired of seeing me alone. She says she can do that any day. She wanted me to see you for a change. That means you've told him, of course. Yes. Is it true? I've been thinking about it. Well, hasn't Joan offered you a drink? You two must be in love. I'm not. I need one. <laughs> well, I've only just got here. When are you two getting married? Stop changing the subject. What is the subject? My career might very well be dead, like many other things. I can get along without it. Can you? From a purely economic standpoint, can you? Dirty dog. The answer is no. I have a contract here. Are you going to sign it or not? I don't know. Am I to be starved? Do I get 200 pounds a week? <laughs> no, but six months from now you will. Now look here, Carrie, use a little common sense. I'm pouring everything I've got into this production. It's the kind of cast I could never get together again as long as I live. Look at this lineup. You're intelligent enough to appreciate that list. You're doing this just for me, Jay? No. I'm doing it for myself. It's my first production in five years. I can't afford to miss. The cast all right. Who's doing the sets? Someone you've never met. Yes, it uh, happens to be a Mercedes now. Mercedes? Yes, look at those sketches. They're the best thing in the whole production. I didn't even know she was in England. Well, she got back about a month ago. She spent the last 11 months in an American hospital in Paris. When they picked her up from that concentration camp, she weighed 83 pounds. Well, she's had a tough time and she needs the job. However, if it means that much to you. Where is she? At Cold Ash, she's trying to sell it. May I borrow these, Jay? It'll give me an excuse to call on her. Is that wise, Kara? I don't know. But I'm going to Cold Ash in any case. Well, I... Go ahead, Carol, take them. Thanks. Forgive me, will you? I want to put in a call. Was I wrong? I don't know. We can only wait and see. This way, Mum. I'll tell Mrs. Noel you're...
you're here. Thank you. It's silly to be so bright. What's there to be afraid of? I've got a date with death. With the bringer of death. With all the hatred that killed Michael. Hold my hand, will you, darling? I'm afraid. But I had to come. Into the presence of evil and cruelty. Of all that you wanted to spare me and couldn't. I've got a date with death. Hello, cat. You're still beautiful. But how did you get back here? He took you away and lost you years ago. I was hunting for a stone cat. Smooth and graceful. And full of mystery. You were hunting for it, my love, almost to the end. But it's here, in this room, because all the mysteries end here. Is this woman a black magician? Hello. I didn't mean to keep you waiting. I moved rather slowly still, I'm afraid. Mercedes. Mrs. Noel. Caroline. Miss Seward. Won't you sit down? No, thank you. Would you like a drink? No, thank you. A cigarette? No, thank you. What have we to say to each other, I wonder? I didn't come here just out of curiosity. Why not? It would be natural. I've been curious about you, waiting for you. I've been expecting you every day, long before you telephoned. Then you know why I've come. Not, I imagine, to speak about your costumes for the play. No. To talk about Michael. I wish we'd met earlier. Do you know, in the old days, I often thought of asking you to come to see me. I wouldn't have come. You've come now. That's different. He's dead. You can't hurt him now. Why, in the name of heaven, did you hurt him so much? I never wanted to hurt him. To love is to be hurt. Michael loved me once. Oh, I hate to hear you say that. Try not to hate. Try to let me say to you now what I should have said to you then. No, no, what's the use? I think I could explain to you that thing in Michael that you never understood. That's insane. I knew it all. Understood it all. You could have let him go and you didn't. That's all there is to understand. He only wanted to be free, to be at peace with me, and you refused him that. Never. You refused to divorce him. Never. What? Never. That's a lie. In New York in 39, he went to you then and asked for it. Did he tell you that? No, not in words, no. But I knew he saw you and I thought that... Yes. Michael did come to see me then. We spent an evening together. He said he had something he wanted to give back to me. It was this. Give back to you? But it was his. No, mine. He gave it to me before we were married. We both loved it. When I left him, I left the cat here with him. I couldn't bear to take Stop. It. You said you left him? That's not a surprise to you, surely. It is? That I fell out of love with Michael. I never knew that. I was a very cruel, selfish young woman. And he went on loving you? Yes, for a long time. He couldn't banish my ghost. Even after I knew him? Yes. For how long? But how could you know that? You never saw each other? He wrote to me regularly. Even after I was there? Yes. That's a lie. I don't believe you. It's the truth. He'd gotten the habit of talking to me. He told me everything, always. And he never needed me at all. That's what you're trying to tell me. What you and Michael shared was something very real. Something that became more and more real. But not love. There's more than one kind of love. No! I've got it now. I knew I should. The answer to all the mystery here in this hateful room. He loved you. He couldn't live without you. 
That's why he killed himself. Killed himself? That's not true. Oh, yes, it is. Michael committed suicide. I tell you, it's not true. That sort of accident doesn't happen to a doctor. He killed himself. Do you hear me? Only cowards commit suicide. Michael wasn't a coward. Yes, he was. I know that now, too. All those years, he couldn't tell me the truth. He lied and deceived me. Mercedes? You've done everything you wanted to do. You killed him. You killed my memory of him. And my love for him. No, don't touch me. You've won the last battle of hate. I'm going now. Wait. I shan't attempt to plead my cause with you or his. I only want to prove to you that Michael didn't kill himself. And I want to prove it for his sake as well as for yours. How could you prove that? He wrote me a letter on the night that he died. The letter? At the French Hall? Oh, yes. It would be to you, not to me. It didn't reach me for months. As soon as I read it, I realized that it ought to belong to you. Here it is. The last insult. All right, give it to me. I'm not afraid. Mercedes, my dear. Where are you? I am sitting in our, in our old, old place. place. Where we first met. The French horn. You still haunt it, but kindly. The shadow whom once I hated and longed for. A kind shadow now. You were right. Carolyn has at last become the reality. Only gradually have I come to realize that she is all my future, just as you are all my past. I love her with my whole heart, and I cannot marry her until you are found. She asks for nothing. It is at last I who would give her everything. The gods are just and of our pleasant vices make instruments to plague us. Mercedes, come back and set me free. Michael. Is that the letter of a suicide? No. And I can see now why he could say it all to you, not to me. At least you know he loved you at the end. I think I knew it always inside my heart. You loved him. You gave up everything for him. That was pure dedication. A willow cavern at his gate. It isn't given to many people to love like that. Thank you, Mercedes. You know, it seems to me suddenly that I have everything to thank you for. Even Michael. How curious that is. No, keep it. It's so much more yours than mine. How gentle you are. And I said such cruel, such awful things. I'd better go now. No, I'd like you to stay. Won't you change your mind about that drink now? Yes, thank you. I believe I will. You know, it's funny. I thought that everything ended here. Now it feels quite different. As though something had just begun. Yes. Let's drink to that, shall we? To us. Us? But you said that before. Oh, no. No, it wasn't you. It was Michael. The first time. It's neat. It completes the pattern. To us. Next week's Westinghouse program, here is something well worth remembering.
Now that the world has learned how to tap atomic energy with the atomic bomb, what a blessing it would be if science could harness this vast atomic energy to generate electricity, to propel ships, to do the work of the world. Well, it's on the way. Here at Westinghouse, as men write another chapter in the sureness behind every Westinghouse product, scientists are developing the world's first atomic power plant for ship propulsion. Entrusted by the Navy and the Atomic Energy Commission, Westinghouse men are converting basic data from the University of Chicago into the atomic power plant. So once more, Westinghouse engineering and research chart the path of the future. If it's a product for home, for business, for farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Others in the cast of The Willow Cabin were Catherine Meskill, Isabel Bonner, Treba Fazee, Michael Lind, Lois Nettleton, Ellen Merrill, Jane Surrey, and Margetta Warwick. This is Paul Brentson saying goodnight, Paul Westinghouse, inviting you to be with us again next week. Meanwhile, remember, the American Heart Association drive is now on. You help your neighbor, perhaps your child or yourself, when you give to the 1950 Heart Campaign. You can make your contribution wherever you see the red plastic heart. Or send it to Heart. That's H-E-A-R-T in care of your local post office. And now, until next week, good night. Miss Gillette's evening gown and negligee and Miss Brooks' evening gown, designed by Florence Lustig. Portions of this program were brought to you by Mechanical Reproduction.